I've been looking for a solution to these external hard drives and the constant need to dump data off my computer to make room for the next video I'm working on. I only have room for about one video at a time, it's very frustrating, and I want to just concentrate on that filming and editing process and not worry so much about my storage. After a bit of research, I narrowed it down to Synology and QNAP. And after watching videos by Armando, Max, and Gerald Undun, I landed on the TVS X72 XT series. This thing is absolute fire. I'll make sure to put links in the description below to their videos as well as all the products I talk about so you can check them out for yourself. I edit on Final Cut Pro using the Mac ecosystem. And because of that, I wanted both a NAS and a DAS solution. This thing has the ports that I was looking for. It has two Thunderbolt 3 ports that are wicked fast, also has a 10 gigabit per second port, has the USB, the normal network ports, everything in there. And if I wanted more, there's also a PCI expansion slot at the top. I needed a lot of storage. I already had 12 terabytes of data ready to put on here so I could access it at any time and repurpose my old footage. In addition, I wanted it to last at least three to four years into the future. I went with the six bay version. There's different options that you get, four bay, six bay, eight bay. I thought this was a good balance for my needs and I filled it with six 14 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf Pro drives. The reason I went with 14 terabytes is I wanted it on the larger size because I needed this storage room and also they were on sale. So best value for the money. I believe these now go up to 18 terabytes. So you could put quite a bit more in here if you wanted. And these things also come with a two year warranty where you can do data recovery and a five year limited warranty on top of that. So everyone recommends these. Hopefully they don't let me down. After putting all those drives in there, that gives me 84 terabytes of space before setting up the RAID configuration. Selecting the RAID configuration is a trade-off between performance, redundancy, and the space available after you do the configuration. Now, I was pondering RAID 5, RAID 50, RAID 10, and ended up landing on RAID 6. I take a hit in a couple of these areas, but one thing it gives me is peace of mind because I can have two drives fail at the same time and still recover my data, but the, the big hit that I'm gonna take on this is I go from 84 terabytes of usable space all the way down to 50.5 terabytes. It's a fairly big hit, but that's the cost that you have to pay to have that redundancy in there. To speed things up with cache acceleration, I also populated the two NVMe M.2 slots with SSDs from Samsung. They're one terabyte each, and I went with the 970 Evo Pluses. The speeds I'm getting off of this thing are absolutely amazing using it as a DAS with that Thunderbolt connection. I can edit directly off of it using Final Cut Pro. Just one note, it can be a little confusing, but make sure to pick up a solid Thunderbolt cable if you're gonna do this. This test blew my mind using the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test with these devices. I'm using a late 2016 MacBook Pro. It has two Thunderbolt 3 ports on each side. The internal SSD writing to it, we get right around 1600 megabytes per second and reading 760 megabytes per second. So hold on to those numbers for just a second. These older Western digital hard drives, the My Passports and such, I'm getting right around 100 megabytes per second reading write speeds. Not too bad to push data to it, but not great for editing. I do edit directly off of the SanDisk Extreme SSD, and that gets right around 500 megabytes per second read and write speeds. But moving over to the QNAP in a DAS configuration connected directly with a Thunderbolt 3 port in RAID 6, so we are getting a little bit of a performance hit there, we're getting right around 850 megabytes per second read and write speeds to my Mac. That is absolutely crazy, blew my mind, and explains why I can directly edit off of this NAS slash DAS. Obviously I care about protecting my data, so I picked up an uninterruptible power supply, the APC BX1350, but there's a lot of different options out there. This one in particular does have battery backup, it has surge protection, and it's 810 watts. With just the QNAP plugged into it, we get a right around 60 minutes of operation. That's plenty of time to shut it down gracefully and all those things. Now, if you wanna have that all automated, it comes with this funny looking USB cord that looks like a phone jack on one side and a USB plug on the other. You plug them in and you go into your settings on the QNAP side. And what you can do is pick option one, which is to shut down after a certain period of time that the power's out. So if you pick it 
to be, say, two minutes, probably every time the power goes out, it's gonna shut down your NAS. If you pick it to be a half an hour, maybe the power is resumed before the NAS shuts down, and that's gonna allow it to keep operating. Now, if you're gonna be traveling and you need this thing to reboot for you, because you can't go in and push that on button again, you can also pick option number two, which is auto protection mode. So this is gonna shut down basically everything in there to a safe state whenever the power goes out, and then it's actually gonna reboot once the power goes back on, so you don't have to have someone come in and hit that on button when you need to. It really depends on if you're using this completely at home or if you're accessing it from the internet. Speaking of booting up the system, let's talk about a couple areas that aren't deal breakers for me, but are probably important to note. Number one is the boot time and shutoff time. It takes right around two minutes to shut off my NAS and about four minutes and 30 seconds to boot it up. So if you some reason want to turn it on and off a lot and use it in that configuration versus just leaving it on all the time, just know that there is some time involved with that process. The second thing is the noise. Now, if you fill this with SSDs, it's gonna be different, but filled with hard drives, you're gonna hear all those hard drivey clicky sounds that you're used to hearing before we had solid state drives. And you're also gonna hear the fans in the back of this, which do make some sound. I would not leave this right here on the table plugged in while I'm doing my work here, but I think it's fine in any sort of office, home office, or any other environment. It's not gonna bug you from that standpoint. The third thing is the price. This is obviously a bit more pricey than some of the other options out there. I'll put some of the, the lower cost ones down in the description below. You might be able to add the Thunderbolt 3 ports to them through a PCI expansion as well and go with a different method. Just keep in mind, look at the RAM, the processor, and all those aspects. I think this will support me for the next three, four, five, six years, hopefully. So a little secret, recently when I was looking to purchase a camera, I ended up buying this NAS instead and I couldn't be happier. It's not as exciting, it's not as showy, but it's gonna give me so much more efficiency in my workflow. Absolutely thrilled about it. Let me know what you're looking for in a NAS in the comments below and give this video a like if you thought it was useful.